Houses are the human being's greatest refuge from the unknown and the unpleasant. It's the place that every kid runs like a madman to when the streetlights come on. It's where we eat, it's where we bathe, it's where we entertain ourselves. It's a place where we feel so safe, we somehow find the peace to close our eyes and drift off for hours at a time. Well, what if that wasn't the case? What if the home was the place where you can't eat in peace? The place where you can't watch TV? The place where you can't even sleep without someone or something bothering you, harassing you, attacking you, watching your every move, could even see what you think and feel? What if your home was the place where something like that was waiting for someone like you to get home? This is the case in 1991's TV movie, The Haunted. The Smurls, not Smurfs, Smurls, have just moved into an innocent two-story house sometime in the mid-1970s. As soon as they arrive, little things begin to happen. Things you really wouldn't think about. Day-to-day -day stuff. Tools that were just there go missing. Voices of family members can be heard when the house is supposed to be empty of all other people. Little things like that that you may have experienced. Eventually, the paranormal plight goes from just puzzling stuff to horribly antagonizing things as evil, black, amorphous blobs appear drifting through the house. Demons rape family members, and something carries the children out of bed at night, dropping them on the floor where they lay and scream. The Smurls' neighbors, church officials from their own church and churches of many different denominations, even purported paranormal investigators cannot help the Smurls, as efforts to ward the presence and the home away seemingly only make it stronger, perhaps also even angrier. This is the story of the haunted. I personally don't believe in hauntings, but the idea terrified me as a child, and it still creeps me out and utterly fascinates me. Ghosts are really the scariest thing out there. Think about it, they're invisible, they're waiting in your bedroom. They're everywhere and nowhere all at once. They're honestly right where they don't need to be, where you don't want them to be, and they're going to scare the crap out of you. Jesus, wet. How do you fight that? You don't. You, you just kind of exist with it. One of those paranormal investigator groups that I mentioned in the movie, it's, it's the Warrens. You know the Warrens from The Conjuring and the like. They're, they're real people with some not-so-real stories that they told, but... As much as I dislike the Warrens and I think that they're con artists, and I'm not shocked at their involvement here, I do have to admit their brand of haunted house story, which they manufactured with every single person they investigated. They always had a story that they could make up from something and sell books with. It's effective lore that stands apart from a lot of other popular ideas about ghosts. Many people think ghosts are just like a, a tape recording, leftover energy from a life now past. Things that are unaware of the world around them that aren't actually sentient. And then there's another professed belief in what ghosts may be, and that is that ghosts are conscious beings. And when they're conscious beings, they're also popularly considered to be lost instead of malicious. Maybe maybe innocents wandering places in confusion, just, just lost after death, not knowing what happened to them. And they scare the living in ways that are like when you accidentally walk in on a relative in the bathroom. It's happened. In the Warren's attempt to make sense of the haunting stories, or maybe to add some undead zest to the affair for that sweet, sweet TV rating gold, they offered that ghosts aren't just dead people. They're, they're, they're thralls to something more sinister, something older than life on Earth, something that has never actually, in fact, been alive at any point, something which exists in the world beyond, the world between life and death, something that is absolutely evil. In this movie's presentation of the Warren's beliefs, they said that the evil gathers the dead together and uses these souls to commit foul acts against the living. It does this as a way to harvest the energy of the living. I guess the fear, the turmoil. The Warrens would call this evil a demon. I tend to call it fucking terrifying. You thought dead people wandering around moaning being lost was bad? Well, what if they're just slaves to something even worse? and worse, has noticed you. The Haunted shows us these simple yet utterly creepy ideas in really effective sequences. Particularly memorable are the disembodied voices. They're things like 
a voice asking for someone by name from another room and a questioning yell. Like when you're looking for somebody and you don't know where they are exactly, but you know they're somewhere nearby. Well, these voices are calling out like that. Calling out for you. Maybe you've heard something like that. Someone calling for you while you're busy. You're preoccupied with something and you swear somebody said your name. Well, in this case, the calls get closer and closer. It must be right outside your door. It's so loud. You look up from what you're doing to see if they're there. But no one's there. Hey! And suddenly, the voice is in the room with you. The room you're alone in. The room in the house that you're alone in. Holy shit. It's so simple. But it works as a masterful subversion of expectation. The Haunted has more than one trick, though. It has other ones that are just as good. I love the creepy visual ghost effects. Also present are neat practical effects, like invisible fingers visibly pressing on flesh. I love that trick. They're probably doing it with some compressed air, but it, it just looks so wicked. And, and there's also some really wacky stuff that doesn't hold up too well, like the fat rapist ghost witch, or, or the mom being flown around the bedroom like some sort of demented Superman dreams going on. That's kind of silly, and as silly as it can get, it's all memorable still, but... For some reason, that fat lady sequence really bothered me a lot more when I first saw it as a teenager back in the day. Maybe it was because I was watching it late at night in a house where people had died. The scariest house I've been in. Oh. This talented spirit called The Haunted came to us in the early 1990s, right in that sweet spot of television when the fresh, innocent Fox Channel was trying to get in on that child-traumatizing, unsolved mysteries, ghost tales market. You know what I'm talking about if you were alive in the 90s. The Haunted is a straightforward, serious, biographical retelling of an otherworldly thing going on in a place that is, more or less, just like where you're probably watching this video right now. I give The Haunted three spinning clown mobiles that were evil even before a demon got its mitts on them out of five. Maybe it's a good thing that houses cost a million dollars now because we can't afford houses. That means we can't afford ghosts, right? Well, about that. You're probably in an apartment, maybe a cardboard box, but hey, guess what? Those can still be haunted, so enjoy. They're probably pissed off even more because they have to haunt something that's not a house. They were promised their entire life they were going to be able to haunt a house, and here you are, you big jerk. You can only rent. Good luck with your ghost. Hopefully you're not watching this before bed. I'm, I'm sorry if you are, but actually I'm not. I hope you get scared. Enjoy! Happy Halloween!